The first question, what is a beast? Hopefully we'll answer that with these next few slides. Psalm 73, verse 22 says, when I was senseless and ignorant, I was like a beast before you. Hmm. Beast is a senseless and ignorant person, metaphorically. Enoch 8893 says, then I began to cry out with all my might, imploring the Lord of the sheep and showing him how the sheep were devoured by all the beasts of prey. See that? Yeah. I see that start distinction so this between the beast and the sheep. Second Ezra 8 verse 29 says, let it not be your will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, but to look upon them that have clearly taught your law. It's an interesting uh, juxtaposition, right? There's a contrast yeah. there, it seems to me, that we're, we're looking at people that clearly teach the law, meaning they know the law, think it's good, on the other side, that there's others who live like beasts. It's pretty clear to me. Right. Daniel 7, 17 says, these great beasts, which are four, are four kings which hmm. shall arise out of the earth. So Daniel in that vision equates beasts to being a person as well, but in yeah. specific, a king. And so from the previous verses, we would assume this is a king who persecutes the righteous, idiomatically called sheep, and also someone that is not following the law of God. That's lawless, right? Interesting that we'll, we'll later see him called the lawless one as well. <laughs> that's right. But prayer of Manasseh. Chapter one, verse three says, you set limits for the sea by speaking your command. You closed the bottomless pit and sealed it by your powerful and glorious name, AKA authority. So we got a mention of the bottomless pit here, right? And this is the only other, I think this is a King James version of prayer of Manasseh there. It's the only other verse I found with the words, you know, that phrase, the bottomless pit. And that word in the Greek for the abyss in Revelation 9, 1 is the word bottomless pit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Job 26, five through six, it says the departed spirits tremble under the waters and their inhabitants naked is Sheol before him and abaddon has no covering yeah so we're gonna look at a few more verses that mention abaddon abaddon however you want to pronounce it but you know it seems to represent a couple different things a couple different concepts in scripture here so we'll yeah. see this more later too but Job 31, 12 does say, for it would be fire that consumes to a abaddon and would uproot all my increase we know that the word means destruction but uh, this also to me kind of seemed like it was pointing out a, a fire that reaches, you know, deep, maybe down to a place. That's right. That's right. Psalm 88, one, will your loving kindness be declared in Sheol, your faithfulness in Abaddon? So now yep. we're getting the second connector with Sheol and this place of destruction that the Hebrews called Abaddon. Yeah, it seems to be correlated with the, the whole biblical underworld situation, right? We know we read in Enoch 22 that there was there was four compartments, one for the righteous, one for the unrighteous. And then there's these other compartments. Well, we covered one of them in Tartarus. So I, I also even question, Sean, I'll be honest, is Abaddon maybe the Hebrew word for Tartarus? I never thought about it. Because it's yeah. it's seeming possible. But that that is more consistent with the bottomless pit idea because or why it could be referred to as the bottomless pit instead of sheol because sheol is not a bottomless pit it's a compartmentalized place whereas tartarus is supposed to be the area below below sheol below the compartmentalized area where the good, good and the bad souls of mankind go to await judgment and resurrection so could be yeah i have to look yeah. into that further Next verse says, Proverbs 15, 11, Sheol and Abaddon lie open before the Lord. How much more the hearts of men, right? Everything is visible to him. He's all knowing, all powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Tw Proverbs 27, 20 says, Sheol and Abaddon again are never satisfied, nor are their eyes of man ever satisfied. So I just wanted to give you all the verses that showed the, <laughs> the correlation. Yeah, but these two specifically, though, these are great because like this one, Proverbs 15, 11, uh, Mitch and Sheol and, and Abaddon light open for the Lord. I mean, because it's, you know, trying to say, look, the, these two places or the description of this, of these ideas are way below the surface of the earth where men dwell, which is covered by, you know, who knows how much, how many miles of dirt. The point is, it's just like trying to draw the extremity of distance. So if the Lord at least is eight the, miles, at least, at least, right. So if the Lord is most high at the highest level of the firmament, and it's just trying to say like, he can even see down into the bottom of the creation model where he made how much more can he see into your little heart through your little chest right so like or to see the intents of your mind and heart and things like that same kind of concept with this one they are never satisfied nor are the eyes of man this is referring to sin and uh, the sin nature within man similarly is the everyone who's killed goes to sheol and, and, and destruction and right? i noticed um, another translation said that it, they were never full yeah. Sheol and a banner, never full. Interesting, right? 
They got more than enough space. Here's that definition. Abaddon in the Hebrew, in the Strong's Concordance, it says it's a part of speech. is a proper name of location. Transliteration, Abaddon, and phonetic spelling, Abaddon. <laughs> a definition is a place of destruction or ruin, Abaddon. So the word can mean destruction, but apparently they, they attribute it to a place. The fifth angel sounded, right? Revelation 9, 1 through 2. And so the, the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven, right? An angel from heaven, which had fallen to the earth. And the key of the bottomless pit was given to him and he opened the bottomless pit. So here's these mentions of that specific particular abyss that the angel from heaven, I know the words say fallen to earth. I would propose that this is a, a good heavenly angel that, uh, that comes down who's on a mission from God to open this pit with the, the right. key that he's given to do so. It's not that it's a bad angel opening right. the pit, but what word, comes out of it might be. Yeah, yeah, that word fallen often gets translated in, with our modern mindset of someone losing their balance and falling off something, right? Versus it, it's just coming in, in the Greek, it just means descend. Yeah, so uh, Revelation 9 11, they have a, as king over them the angel of the abyss, his name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek, he has the name Apollyon. Now we have a direct location signifier of an actual entity who's also called a king. So we've got Correct. all three concepts, a king who's considered that word angel. It doesn't always mean angel of God. It gets the word agalos in, in the Greek. It can also just mean a messenger. Revelation 11 says when they had finished their testimony, they being the two witnesses, didn't have time to elaborate more on that. But the two witnesses are on the scene. But the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make a war with them and overcome them and kill them. The beast comes out of the abyss. We have another qualifier there of a location. That's right. That's right. And then Revelation 17, 8 says, the beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. So, yeah, that's it's interesting to me that. So we're getting this particular entity. Right. And he, this is the pronouns used of it is not just a kingdom, but an actual king who's referenced as a beast, which is an actual person. And he comes up out of the abyss. So, Wes, is because a lot of people like to reinterpret Revelation on their own. Mm -hmm. They just to make up art use subjective and just pull their own interpretations out of the air. This is what we're always trying to say. Like, what does the text interpret it for us? Does the text actually explain itself or does it need you to explain it? Well, I would suggest the angel explains in the vision that John's getting, the angel explains to John the things he doesn't understand. And so this is what revelation 17, eight is doing for him. And is explaining that, Oh, by the way, this beast that you saw was, and is not, and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. It gets explained for you guys. So this is the abuso again. Mm -hmm. yeah, so in, means bottomless yep. and boundless. In the yep. Greek, the abyss, unfathomable depth, and the home of the dead and of evil spirits. We know that the evil spirits aren't in the same compartment that the dead souls of men are. Yeah, the evil spirits can be contained in one of these abysses. And uh, apparently this guy, this character of the Beast of Revelation, hangs out with them down there for the time being. You know, we read a passage where in one hand you have this concept of destruction called Abaddon in the Hebrew being referred to and also being in the biblical creation model being underneath the land where we live. And then later we see an actual character who's called a king, a physical entity that comes up out of the abyss, and he's called by the name Abaddon. It's very natural in ancient cultures that you would have a person named after a concept and the ultimate example of that is our wonderful messiah the son of god whose name is yeshua which means salvation it's beautiful that's right right so yeah. this is not uncommon this is a very general common hebraic synonym for a person's name would be directly related to their function or their place of location or their purpose same with shem right shem firstborn of noah his he's one that got the authority of the priesthood passed down to him. His his name Shem means name, which means authority in Hebrew. Yeah, right. yes, it's very very on the nose, guys, with their idioms. <laughs> they are, yeah. And then the Greeks they embodied Tartarus as one of their their gods of chaos, and so right. it was it was a common thing in ancient cultures, like Sean was saying. Now we're getting into when does this character? Because we just answered hopefully for you. Where does he come from? The abyss, mm -hmm. a literal physical tangible place under the earth. There are these abysses. If you haven't checked out the biblical underworld episode 17 and then 18 was Tartarus. Uh, I'd recommend those. 